My name is Barbara Jean Lindsay, and this is my near-death experience contact story. It's a true story. It happened to me on December 4th in 1989. I was attending a women's uh, retreat center at my local uh, psychic school. That's psychic school. And um, uh, I hadn't been feeling really good all day, but uh, during the evening when I arrived there, I was in excruciating pain, so much so that I actually passed out. And when I passed out, I full body channeled a being from Egypt who said he was there to kill me because I had information that couldn't be shared at that time. And he then collapsed both my lungs in front of all of these women, horrified them. And I was in such excruciating pain from the collapsed lungs that I couldn't stay in the body. So I popped out of the body and went to this really beautiful place of love and there was undulating warm water and, and I found out that I am love, I came from love and I will return to love, to this loving place. It's, it's a part of us, it's a organic and it's alive and it's loving and it's nurturing. And as I'm laying in this uh, undulating, beautiful, loving water and love, uh, I uh, just looked down and couldn't see my body. And so that's when I had this uh, experience of uh, consciousness raising where I figured out that, hey, I existed even without a body. How is that true? How is that possible? Because I had been conditioned to believe that I was just a body. But now through this near-death experience and being located in back with where I came from, then I became this love and uh, my, my mind was blown through this experience and my consciousness was expanded. And I'm just like beyond myself uh, trying to figure out what was going on. And, and what I discovered was that I was love and I am loved and I came from love. And right when I had that moment, when I looked down and saw that I didn't have a body yet, I still existed, I was snapped like that in a second up on a spaceship. Now, I'd never been on a spaceship before. It was not in my reality. I was a hardworking single mother of three. I didn't have time for that kind of stuff. And so um, on the spaceship, I knew it was a spaceship uh, because of the it was a circular spaceship. I was in the middle of the room and to my left came this huge, uh, about an eight foot uh, square shouldered being in a white robe and a white hood. And as he approached me, uh, I never saw his face, but he said I could call him the guardian, which I did. And I felt uh, very safe and very secure with him. And he said that his job was to be an interpreter between myself and another group of beings that he would introduce me to, which he did. And when he did, he waved his hand and like magic, uh, a large window appeared and behind the window or behind the glass was a group of about 10 beings. I didn't count them. They all had matching white robes on. Some were fat, some were short, some were skinny, and they had personalities and they talked amongst themselves. And then they would decide what they wanted to say. They would give that information to one person and then that one person would tell my guardian and then the guardian would tell me. And this went on for a while. But what I learned from this was that they also had some things they wanted to teach me that I could bring back home and, and teach uh, others. And that's hence this story and why I'm talking to you today is that um, they show me a picture, uh, a hologram of the mother earth. And at that time I was an organic gardener and uh, into natural foods and things, but I wasn't really into uh, seeing the that my connection uh, to the earth and then my connection to the planets and to the cosmos and to the galactic system. I had never had that connection before. So that was something that I didn't know. And so they educated me in that uh, ancestry of, of my ancestral knowledge of this planet and of the galactic system. And they also told me that, um, that the earth herself is alive, that she is a, a feminine being and that uh, I'm connected and our heartbeats are connected and we're connected with one another. And so 
uh, my heart and the earth's heart became one like that of a mother drum of a native a native Indian, a Native American, uh, like a Native American drum that I found out about much later. But as I had a relationship with the mother earth, I cried for uh, remembrance of that relationship. And, and part of my job was to help uh, protect her and take care of her and then find uh, peace on our planet so that we could then join the bigger galactic community. So from that point, then I was swished out, uh, out of the uh, spaceship and with uh, my guardian, and we flew over these mountains of green and I became one with the color green. I've learned a lot about the color green afterwards, but at that time I didn't know the, the green of the heart chakra and of opening the heart and how to forgive and how to let go and how to go with the flow and that's all in the heart center. And so they did a lot of healing work on my heart and, and um, I think we as a species could use a little help there too. And so they were helping me to heal my heart and uh, remember again of my connection, not only uh, with the earth, but with the other planets and other beings there. Because from that point, they whisked me off, the guardian did, uh, to this beautiful temple. And in this temple, it was kind of a Greek temple. And I had never been out of the United States before. And uh, much later, I traveled the world and I saw a temple that was very much similar to the one that they showed me uh, in my consciousness while my body was being taken care of at the local ICU. And uh, I didn't think about my body at all during, I was totally in this space, 100% having this experience with these extraterrestrials or interdimensional beings or master beings, uh, whatever you want to call them. I kind of call them like my family. And, uh, and so they were showing me uh, my relationship uh, with this temple. And as I went to the temple, there was a group of beings in the same white robes, tall, I never saw their faces, and they were in a circle around uh, this uh, podium in the middle. As I walked closer to them, or as I floated a little bit towards them, they opened their hands and I was brought into the circle. As I became one with the circle, I could feel the synergy of all the beings in the group. And they did kind of a guttural, kind of a, a guttural sound together, like a chant together that was very powerful. And as we all focused, there was on this pod, uh, on this podium, there was like a little fog coming down from it, and in it was a hologram of the Mother Earth again. And she was spinning very lightly, and they told me that their work was to help protect the Earth and keep her safe. And they had been doing this for for many, many, many lifetimes, and they would continue to do so. And their names were the Watchers, and that I was a part of this group, and that I could always come back to this group much later. And that is uh, what I do. And so after I had the initiation with the Watchers, then my guardian pulled me back up. And the next thing I found myself at an ambassador party, a group of uh, beings from all over the universe or galaxies or many galaxies or sub galaxies. And they were all there. And and um, I felt like kind of like a zoo animal on display that I was a human that they could actually talk to. Uh, it was all done in telepathic communication this whole time was in telepath. But then once I got there, they kind of went to their archaic system, I think, where they could actually talk with me uh, as out of respect for me. And they thought that was really funny. And I thought that was really funny. And they all liked my smile, which I looked down. And again, I could never see my body. My body wasn't there, but my spirit uh, part of me was really having a really wonderful time with these galactic uh, interplanetary beings all there for peace and exchange of information with one another. And I was a part of that group. Um, and so as I was having such a good time there, then my guardian brought me up and out and I swirled up in a spiral and met the goddesses. And these goddesses showed me how to tone and how to find my own voice. From that point then, the guardian gave me the look and I saw myself staring down at the 
bed below me in a hospital and there was me in a hospital bed. At first I didn't even know it was me and then I figured it out it was me and I went holy crap that's me down there. And so then the guardian said hey just before you go I said I need some help down there. And he said well we'll give you white light we'll give you the gift of white light. And I said white light? That's nothing. And I threw a fit like a little 10 year old, like if you're going to have me go back down there again, I really need to have some real major help. And he says, well, the white light. And I said, OK. So I started to go float back down into the body. And right before I did, he said, oh, by the way, Barbara, he said, we'd like for you to be an ambassador. We have a mission for you and it would be an ambassador. And I said, OK, I'll be an ambassador. Sure. And then as I float down to the body again, very close, I look back up and the, um, the guardian was gone. And I never got to find out what being an ambassador was at that time. And then I acclimated back into my body, sat up and said, oh my God, I'm starving, I want some nachos. And uh, much to everyone's surprise, I had been in a coma for a couple of days and the minister had been called to give me last rites. But as a miracle, I totally came out of it 100% physically uh, perfect but my consciousness and my spirit were changed irrevocably for the rest of my life. And so from that day forward, I have uh, walked a spiritual path and giving readings to healings and any information and help that I can. And most of all, love to everyone that I meet. And thank you for listening.